Hey there, Arconiacs. After the surprise ending of Omet B Season 3 where Saz was killed, I wanted to make some preliminary guesses on who shot Saz. I need to say at the top here that being able to figure out who killed Saz at this point is literally impossible, but I have gone through all the previous seasons and read all the postseason interviews, and I have some ideas. From what was said by the showrunner John Hoffman, it appears that Charles was the intended target. It was not right out stated, but alluded to. I will add only a few people at the party knew that Saz was going to Charles' apartment, so we will not be taking in the idea that Saz was the target into consideration. There are three key comments from John that we will get into. 1. John posed the question, who had beef with Charles? We will go through everyone I've found that could have some meaningful beef with Charles as a person. 2. What stuff Saz had going on in her life that was then catching up with her. We don't know much about her personal life, but we will get into her job and personal relationships. 3. What I feel is the most important, the trio facing repercussions for creating their podcast. Specifically, John stated, what the world does with it and how they feel about it. I think these comments potentially will give us an idea of what we can expect in the season, with the first being the basis of the fake out, but before we get into that, let's go over some details of the past three seasons that may be pertinent to the story for season four and ultimately tell us who shot Saz. We first meet Saz in season one, episode nine, Double Time, we learned that Saz played the stunt double for Charles and Brazos for 20 years. This was also the moment Saz met Jan, and in my opinion, she started flirting with Jan from the moment she laid eyes on her. Whoa! <laughs> well, who do we have here? Charles has a fear of his partner leaving him for Saz because while working on Brazos, Charles dated a woman named Cookie. This woman broke up with Charles for Saz. Cookie and Saz were together for 20 years before Cookie left Saz for another man. By the way Saz speaks of her relationship with Cookie, it seems to have ended around the events of season 1. During this first meeting, Saz does apologize for getting together with Cookie, though later she and Jan would eventually get together as told to us by Saz in season 3 episode 5, Ah Love. Saz and Jan had been seeing each other for at least a year at the time of her death as they started talking in Season 2, Episode 6, Performance Review, when Charles had Saz go to the prison to break up with Jan for him. Professionally, not much is known about what work Saz has done after Brazos ended. When we meet her in Season 1, it's stated that she was in town for the Stunt Awards, which happened annually. She appeared to be working on the Brazos reboot until it was put on hiatus because of sexual assault accusations. In season 1, Saz states she believes that Charles is heating up because of the podcast and wants to be there to take a part in his resurgence. She's overheard talking about this with her agent, Sai. Some things to know in season 1, Saz was the one to deduce that the murder of Tim Kono was a crime of passion and that there was likely poison in the glasses in the garbage bags, suggesting that if you found Tim's lover, you would likely find the killer. In season 3, we hear that Saz has a gig doing stunts for Scott Bakula in LA. At this time, Joy actually asks Saz to send Scott Bakula her love. This is likely how Joy and Scott started talking, leading to the text Charles received at the end of season 3 from Joy stating that Scott says hi. It should also be mentioned, though I don't think it's important, that Saz states that she and Charles have both known Joy for 30 years. During the same conversation, Saz asked Charles if he was sure the killer was after Ben and not actually after him. Saz further states that there is chatter of people wishing it was Charles that died instead of Ben on her ham radio. A ham radio, also known as amateur radio, is the use of radio frequencies for purpose of non-commercial exchanges of messages. In order to operate a ham radio, one must obtain an amateur license from the FCC. It's basically people talking amongst friends in different groups. 
Though you can communicate over very long distances with things like repeaters, the general range of a radio makes me think that this chatter Sass heard was all local to NYC, a very condensed area. She is likely part of some local hobbyist stations. The ham radio may lead to a suspect and we'll talk about that later, but first, let's do some decoding. John Hoffman poised the idea of who had beef with Charles, and the way he stated it seems as if he was talking about in season 3, but let's look through all of the seasons just to be safe. In season 1, episode 2, we learn that Ursula is not the biggest fan of Charles. He doesn't tip and instead gives out headshots, which she drew over, and he rationalized this out of some twisted idea of respect. Also in Season 1, Episode 9, Double Time, Bunny states that the trio has violated the privacy of all the Arconi residents by unwittingly making them characters in their podcast. This could tie into the idea of the trio's repercussions of the podcast. There could easily be someone who didn't want to be a part of it, as many residents stated that the podcast has put a damper on their lives or work, and this is very early on in the podcast life. Dr. Grover Stanley stated he had four clients cancel that week because they were afraid to come to the building, and he blamed the loss in revenue on the trio. I can only imagine that the number of cancels or people not wanting to do work with him has drastically risen and could offer a very good motive. I think it's likely that this will be brought up in Season 4, but I'm not betting on Dr. Stanley being the culprit. Lots of people, including Uma, voted to kick the trio out of the building, but out of all these other characters, most of them only had a few lines of dialogue in Season 1, but we will wait till Season 4 to see if any of these people pop back up in order to garner any further motivations. Unrelated, right after this moment, the trio are in the elevator, and Charles states he doesn't like doing dangerous things. That's why he has a stunt double. I think it would be poetic that this podcast ended up being the reason someone wanted to kill Charles, and he considered it dangerous, and that Saz unknowingly ended up doing her part as his stunt double. Really bringing it all full circle. In season 2, we get the introduction of one of my favorite characters, Lucy, and it was well known that Charles and her mother Emma did not end on good terms. The point could be made that Emma was not a fan of her daughter becoming close with Charles again, when she may have felt that he cared more about Lucy than her during their relationship. Lucy was in the Arcatacombs with a killer. She inadvertently put her fingerprints on the murder weapon. This could be a motive endangering her daughter's life. Or there could be something else that Emma has gleaned from all this. Maybe Emma has been talked about on the podcast just a little bit, not in a positive light. I think it's also important to note that the trios are celebrities in their own rights. Lucy talks about how the idea of Bloody Mabel is well known across the internet with the younger demographic. Lucy herself added Mabel to the Days 100, a site that highlights voices that are notable and changing in the world. Mabel's whole life had been timelined out and talked about in the very popular niche of mental health TikTok, an app with over a billion users, and has recently been identified as a social media app that people spend the most time on. It would also make sense that in this world, Charles and Oliver are just as famous, but maybe in different circles. Other online forums like Facebook and Reddit would have many groups dedicated to them, as would Mabel, but I could also see something that hobbyists who do things like converse over ham radio could get into this, because they are local celebrities, so they would come up in conversation. In Season 2, Charles uses Sass to break up with Jan, who was initially upset but then began a relationship with Saz. It's not a good look because Saz has went into relationships with two of Charles' exes directly after he has dated them. There could be some reason Cookie would blame Charles for her and Saz's relationship ending. Maybe the idea of Saz working with Charles again was a deal breaker for her. 
if she does come up in season four, I believe she will be a person of interest. In season three specifically, Charles did not have many people we could consider him having beef with. There was a little spat with Matthew Broderick, but I feel it was one-sided and Matthew actually had no issue with Charles. Joy is the only other person I think had credible beef with Charles because of their relationship and him suggesting that she may have been a murderer, but murder for her, I think is elite. She seems more like the forgive and forget or just get you out of my mind or out of my purview. Scott Bakula appearing just to be the murderer would be pretty cool, but trying to kill Charles for joy seems like a stretch as he shouldn't have too much dog in that specific fight, though there could be something that comes up that we are unaware of. If the trio or Charles are seeing repercussions of doing the podcast, there could be so many people from Charles' past that he could have brought up on the podcast and whatever Charles said could have easily painted them in a bad light, causing them to enact their revenge. I actually like this as a series ending theme, but it's not but I'm hoping that they will get back to some of the things from season one that we all love, you know, the characters that we meet, and of course, the building. As we get a better look at the life Saz lived, it would make sense that we would get more of Amy Ryan, though Jan being a repeat killer would make sense. She did allude to killing other people, but I believe that poison was her modus operandi and getting someone else to do it on behalf of her seems too complicated of a story. It appears that the bullet that struck Saz came from either the room across the Arconia courtyard or I'm thinking it's very likely that it came from the rooftop, bringing back the iconic location from season one. I think it's very likely that we have yet to meet the killer and this person tried to kill Charles because of something he stated on the podcast. But if the killer is someone we have met before in a previous season and we're sticking with the theme of repercussions of putting the podcast out into the world, there are a few people that come to mind. Building Superintendent Jose Torres was very adamant about his son not being in contact with Mabel as he needed a fresh start. But throughout the season, he got the exact opposite. He was pulled into a story that was partially based around the incident that put him in jail in the first place. And though we do know that he left in order to get that fresh start, I could imagine that people are still searching and looking up his name, finding him if he has his yoga studio, People are likely going there just because they know he's Oscar from the Only Murders podcast and it is still bringing up his past. Aside from Jose, the podcast superfans would be a great group to be weary of. One of them trying to kill Charles or any of the podcasters could be a story of how the heroes created their own villain. And if it was any of the superfans, I would think it was Marv. He was obsessed with the podcast. Multiple times he put himself in the middle of what was going on. He mentions multiple times wanting to be on the podcast and often had his ideas of culprits such as the 6th Avenue Slasher dismissed. Marv seems to have lots of personal issues. His daughter stated that he was dead to him and he openly stated that he has issues with women in power. Marv really wants to be a part of it all, partially hoping that it would allow his daughter to forgive him for whatever he had did or said in the past, and if this didn't work out for him, and maybe the trio badmouthed him on the podcast, it could cause a shocking level of resentment from someone who seems to have a problematic parasocial relationship with the trio. At one point, Charles tells Marv that he is not well, and Marv agrees. If I could spin some ideas a little further, I know it's a shot in the dark, but with his age, it's likely Marv has some military experience. Pairing that with his known access to the building, including his deep knowledge of its secret passageways, I suggest he's the person most likely skilled with a rifle out of everyone that we know and would have the most means to conduct this crime. The superfans mentioned that the podcast has discussion boards. 
if Marv has a military background, this could lend to him also being a ham radio hobbyist because as stated, it is more often used by an older generation. He doesn't even need a military background to be more likely to use a ham radio. Marv's flawed morals and being mentioned on the podcast by the trio unfavoringly may have led him to extreme ideas exacerbating his possible mental illness to a point Marv could have tried to kill Charles as retribution or even hoping to replace him. Those are my thoughts, but give me your ideas. Was there someone that had beef with Charles that I missed? Who do you think the killer is and have we met them yet? Let me know your thoughts down below. Be on the lookout for my theory on who Moriarty is. That'll be coming up next. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.